Hi, my name is Nafiz Zaman, and my project was performing a simple linear regression on NFL point spreads. The data I used comes from the 768 NFL regular season games played in the 2004, 2005, and 2006 football seasons. Specifically, we're interested in point spreads, which are the score differences between two teams. This data includes the points scored by the teams in each game, from which we can calculate the actual point spread. It also includes spreads set by Vegas before the game, which is used for betting. Using the data, we want to see the relationship between the Vegas spread and the actual spread. The variables aren't really dependent on each other, but we can still see if the actual spread follows linearly with the Vegas spread. In other words, do changes in the actual spread reflect changes in the Vegas spread? To analyze the data, we'll use simple linear regression. This is appropriate because we have a scalar variable, the actual spread, and an explanatory variable, the Vegas spread. Simple linear regression fits a straight line through data points. The distances between the observed points and the predicted line are called residuals. The fitted line is created so that the residuals squared is as small as possible. The regression model is given by this equation, which we estimate by this equation. Simple linear regression makes a few assumptions, which we must check. The first assumption is that there is a linear trend. You can see from the smoother plot that the main concentration of points appears to have a positive linear trend. The second assumption is of independence. The spread of different games shouldn't affect each other, so we can safely assume that observations are independent of one another. The third assumption is that the errors are distributed normally. This is a histogram of the residuals and you can see that they follow the theoretical normal curve very well. This is the normal QQ plot of the residuals. The points follow a linear pattern, supporting the normality assumption. In addition, the Shapiro-Wilk test gives a p-value of 0 0.392. Since this is greater than 0 0.05, we can't reject the null hypothesis of normality. The last assumption is that the errors have constant variance. In this plot of residuals versus fitted values, the data shows constant variance about the origin, with the exception of the very first group and a few outliers. All in all, it seems that our assumptions are satisfied. Here's the summary information of the linear model. From here, we get our parameter estimates for beta naught and beta 1. From these estimates, we can write the equation of the fit line, which is down here. We can also use the standard error to create a 95% confidence interval for, B, for beta 1, shown at the bottom. Here's the plot of all data points, along with our fitted line, shown in blue. You can see that there's quite a bit of variability about the line. In addition, the multiple R squared value is 0 0.168, which means the model only explains 16.8% of the variability. Therefore, the model must li most likely would not predict new actual spreads accurately. We're also interested in the observations that most influenced our analysis, which can be found using Cook's distance. This plot identifies three influential observations, number 485, number 629, number 670. Since we have the year, week, and teams of each observation, we can do some research and look at those three games to see what could have caused such discrepancies. For example, in the game corresponding to number 629, Bernard Berrien, Chicago's deep threat, wide deep threat wide receiver, suffered an injury at the beginning of the game. The Bears went on to lose 13 to 31. In the game corresponding to observation number 670, Donovan McNabb, the Eagles' star quarterback, suffered a season-ending injury in the second quarter. The Eagles also went on to lose 13-31. Remember our original question, do changes in the actual spread reflect changes in the Vegas spread? Although we got a very low R-squared value, the parameter estimates beta naught and beta 1 can still be useful. The slope tells us that, for a one-point change in the Vegas spread, we expect a 1.03 point change in the actual spread. We are 95% confident that for a one-point change in the Vegas spread, there would be between a 0.86 and 1.19 point change in the actual spread. Also, the negative value of B0 implies that Vegas tends to overestimate the spread. 
In other words, Vegas tends to favor the home team a little too much. Still, the estimates gave us a line that is very close to the identity line, y equals x. The estimated mean spread is very nearly the Vegas spread, so we can say that changes in the actual spread do reflect changes in the Vegas spread. This is an interesting result considering that Vegas spreads are set solely for betting purposes, not for prediction purposes. Thanks for watching.